Oh, hey everyone. Check, check. Hey, this is my daughter Eliana. Everyone say, aww. Thank you, thank you. Um, really good to be back at Oak Point Can. My name's Adam, if I've not met you before. We had her two months ago. And uh, we also have a close to three-year-old, Caleb, um, who's, who, who's like a bull in the china shop in a lot of ways. And uh, he's very active, incredibly active. And so one of the most common phrases that we've said in our house the past two months has been, if you have multiple kids, you know exactly what I'm, I'm about to say. It's been, hey, be gentle. Be gentle with your sister. Be, buddy, you got to be gentle. You got to be gentle. Hey, but no, 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 you just, you just yeah, kiss her forehead. Yep, be gentle, be gentle. But you can't headbutt your sister. You got to just be really, really gentle. You got to be gentle. You got to be gentle. Um, as we continue our series it, uh, on the fruit of the Spirit called In Step, uh, the, this whole idea of walking in step with the Spirit, um, today we're talking about gentleness and what it looks like and what the meaning is when Paul wrote it in Galatians 5, but also does that meaning have any effect on us today? Is it really just a word for us to calm down for a three-year-old not to hurt a two-month-old, or does it really have uh, impact and meaning that could make a difference in our lives? So that's, that's what we're going to tackle today. Uh, I'm going to give her back to m uh, my wife so she doesn't spit up on me. Can we give Eliana a big round of applause? I also want to, um, before I begin, I, I want to publicly thank your pastor, Mark Kaminsky, for letting me come back. It just shows the bigness of who he is as a person, allowing a Michigan fan to teach the Word of God. Truly, it shows his character in a big way, and he's probably listening, and so we'll just see who wins this year, buddy. Um, we'll just see. Um, but what, what is gentleness? What is this idea of gentleness. When you think about it, you got to look at what Paul meant when he wrote the word gentleness. Like, why did he include it in this list? Uh, and I'll say this probably a couple times today, but as we've been in this series in step, this is not a list of character virtues to wake up every morning and check off and say, yep, I'm loved. I'm loving. Yep, I've got this uh, uh, faithfulness thing down. I've got joy. Yep, check. This is not a, a list to accomplish, as we say. It's a process to embrace. So what was Paul thinking when he wrote the word gentleness? Well, in his day, gentleness was very close to humility. And I think it's the same today. I think humility and gentleness, and as we'll see, meekness, is very closely tied together. And both were seen as not overly exciting character traits to possess. Aristotle wrote that gentleness was seen as the golden mean, which means halfway, the golden average, halfway between excessive anger on one side and not caring at all on the other side, apathy. So even in that, it was seen as like a meh characteristic. Humility was seen as even lower than gentleness. Gentleness was seen in some positive Light. But even the definition seemed a bit negative as I was reading it. But humility for sure was seen as like if you had humility, you were doing life wrong. And so gentleness and humility were tied closely together. And, and, and honestly, not much has changed in our culture from Paul's culture, from the Greeks and the Romans. We live in a day where gentleness and humility is sometimes seen as weakness. And this whole idea of take charge attitude reigns supreme in our day. We see it in movies, TV shows, even how we're tempted to lead our families, to lead our businesses, the CEO type person who takes charge, doesn't take junk from anybody, just really is a domineering personality. So it's pervaded every part of our culture. So the question I've already asked is, why does gentleness make it onto the list of the fruit that the Spirit wants to develop in us? What was Paul thinking? Well, Paul included it because when Jesus showed up, he gave us a brand new way to be human. He gave us an entirely different way to look at humanity. And it, it, it wasn't as if he was revealing God for the first time. No, no, he was getting rid of all the clutter 
that people had built up around God so you could see God for who he really, really was. Jesus exuded gentleness. He lived out humility, and he displayed what it meant to be meek. That word meek, we don't use that often. But Matthew chapter 5 says that if we're blessed, it means that meekness would define who we are. It says we're blessed when we're meek. And meekness is tied to gentleness. It's simply having power or strength that is under control. That's, that's the practical definition of meekness. Picture a Corvette who rolls up to a stoplight. When that light turns green, you know it could beat almost every car that's come alongside it, but it doesn't. It starts slow. That's meekness, power under control. That's what Jesus exuded. And this, that, that's this idea of gentleness that Jesus displays. He had all power, and yet he was in full control. He was firm for the people who needed him to be firm, and he was gentle where it mattered. And by doing this, by living this way, by giving us a picture of gentleness, it was Jesus who shifted the scale for how people thought of gentleness. It was Jesus' life and the church that followed, that came after, that really displayed this fruit as something to be desired as an attractive way to live. It was the first Christians that lived so differently that people were like, what is it about you? And one of the things that was about them was this fruit of the Spirit called gentleness. It was Jesus, the church, and Christians that totally changed culture's view of gentleness. And so what does that mean for us? Well, as with all the fruit, we have to start with how God interacts with gentleness. We have to look at what it looks like for God to be gentle. Is he gentle? When you look at the Old Testament, you might have questions, but let's not forget this is the fruit of the Spirit of God. They start with God. We'll say this until we're blue in the face. I've already said it once, but this is not a list of moral virtues to accomplish. It is a process to embrace, a process of keeping in step with the Holy Spirit in your lives. Not waking up thinking you have to do it all by yourself. Quite the opposite. Waking up thinking like, Jesus, I can't do it all by myself. Help me walk with you. And the process of gentleness begins with receiving gentleness from God. That's where it has to start. Gentleness from God. It has to start there. When you overview the Old Testament, you, like I already said, you might think God is the, like, the only characteristics you see of God is just intense and dominating. He is the just God you see all throughout. And so one might think that gentleness was a new trait that showed up with Jesus. But a closer look at the scriptures will reveal that God is both just and gentle. And his gentleness is all throughout the Old Testament. You read scriptures like Psalm 23 and Psalm 103, Isaiah 40, and you see a picture of God who's gently guiding his people to green pastures and still waters. You see a God who's having compassion for his people, for he knows what we're made of. Isaiah 40 pictures God as he's tending to his people like a shepherd tends to his flock. In Deuteronomy, God is described as a loving father carrying a son. I carried my daughter on purpose because that's the picture of God as gentle. One holding a newborn, a two-month-old, caring for it. Not many people think of the Old Testament as that kind of God, but that's the God of gentleness. And then Jesus shows up on the scene. Jesus shows up and says this in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, one of my favorite passages. He says this, this is Jesus' words, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am, what's the word? Gentle. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, this language of yoke and burden, it's foreign to us. But a uh, yoke was a farming term, and it was a device that they put on oxen. We have a picture of it. To keep them moving in a straight line, it would often tie them together to keep them moving together. It was basically a really, really heavy piece of wood that they would put on the oxen's neck. Jesus was saying that the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day had put such a heavy burden on people's necks, making up and forcing people to obey laws that were made up, man-made. If they wanted to have a right, right relationship with God, they had to obey this yoke that was really really heavy. 
I'm going to call um, my good friend Penny up to the stage. Penny, come on. Uh, you might know Penny. Would you give her a hand as she's coming up here? Come on. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Penny, you might not know this about Penny. Penny does CrossFit. And if you call the church, uh, you might hear Penny's voice. She's one of our receptionists at the Novi location. Um, but I filled this bag with a ton of weights. And you said you've been practicing. So um, maybe, I'm not sure if you want to put it on, I don't know. But this is, really, like, this is really heavy for me, right? And I mean, I'm not saying I'm stronger than Penny. I don't do CrossFit. But I'm just saying, it's heavy. You want to try and lift it? Yeah! I'm guessing if I brought every single one of you up here, you would probably all have a hard time lifting this. This is really heavy. It is quite heavy. It's, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I put don't it, think I could put it on. Yeah, it would be hard to put it on. Yeah, if you put it on me, but I couldn't. No, I don't think I want to do that. I, I, I think I'd be fearful. But, but, the, but the, like the whole point is that the Pharisees and the religious leaders were putting such a heavy burden of harshness. That's the opposite of gentleness, by the way. Harshness, aggression. They were putting such a heavy burden on people and thinking that this was the way to follow God. And Jesus comes on the scene and says, no, no, that's not the way you follow God. The way you follow God is with Jesus, a relationship with him, coming to him. And he quite literally trades, Penny, uh, take that backpack, just, just pick it up. He quite literally trades, he said, hey, I'll take this, you just take this. Yeah. Oh gosh, this is really heavy. Yeah. He trades the heavy burden of harshness for a light pack of gentleness. This is the power of the gospel, by the way. Our sins were a heavy, heavy burden, almost a bag too heavy to carry for us. And yet the law, the Pharisees, they were forcing us to carry it if we were to be right with God. And yet Jesus comes on the scene and says, no, you've cluttered it way too much. Let me trade your yoke, your heavy burden, and come to me, and I will give you gentleness. I will give you a lightweight pack of gentleness. Penny, thank you. Give Penny a big round of applause. God, quite literally, has taken away the heavy pack of harshness and given us the lightweight pack of gentleness. So gentleness from God means that we no longer have to carry the heavy pack of harshness. We can be a new type of person. When things come our way, we don't have to respond the harsh way. We can now respond the gentle way because we've been given it from Jesus. I want to pause here and give you your prompt for your journals, your in-step journals. The step up prompt this week is take time this week and think about the lightweight pack of gentleness God has given you. Journal your thoughts and feelings about what it feels like to have Jesus literally take the heavy pack of harshness in all areas of life, the forgiveness of your sins taken away, the wrath of God through Jesus taken away. And he, he has given you a pack that is easy and free and light and gentle and humble. So just think about that this week as you journal through, like, what does that feel like? What does that feel like? But it doesn't stop there. The Spirit wants to develop this same gentleness in us, in you, so that when you interact with others, your responses to others and the way you interact with people is different. And that's our second point. We extend gentleness toward others. We first receive it from God, but then we extend it towards others. What does it look like to extend gentleness towards other people? Well, it, we've already said the opposite of gentleness is harshness, the heavy bag of harshness. And every single day, we interact with people, and we have a choice whether, we're not, whether or not we're going to respond in a harsh way or a gentle way. We see these situations in our family. You have choices every day in your family, no matter who you live with, whether you're going to respond harshly or gently. We see this in work. You deal with bosses, you deal with coworkers. Every day, you and them have a choice whether harshness is going to define the tone of your words or whether gentleness is going to define. Harshness looks like mean-spirited jokes, sarcasm that goes a little too far, 
a home environment, it's just void of joy. It's not conducive to joy. A work environment that's not conducive to teamwork or letting people celebrate other people's wins and accomplishments. Saying words that cut someone rather than build them up. Harshness, aggression. I don't think we'd have to think very long and hard to remember the last time someone was harsh with us. It sticks with us. But gentleness, gentleness has the power to do, I think, three things, probably a lot more, but these are the three I'm going to give you today. Gentleness has the power to do three major things. Number one, gentleness has the power to prevent major conflict. We see this practically in Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. It cannot be more clear than that. The power of gentleness is to prevent major conflict. And so the next time you are talking with someone, I want you to remember that you have a choice. You have a choice. You could either, um, as the verse says, turn away wrath with a gentle answer, or you could stir up anger. I picture just waters being stirred up by a major storm. You could do that in your words if you chose harsh or gentleness. I guarantee you, almost, that everyone here has been in a, in a situation and the one thing that escalated the situation was a harsh tone or a harsh word. We've all been there. Gentleness has the power to overcome that. Gentleness in your words and your tone has the power to prevent major conflict. The second thing gentleness has the power to do, heal relational conflict. When there's conflict between people, especially in the church, when there's conflict, gentleness paves the way to healing. Check out Galatians 6.1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person. What's the word? Come on, you can do better than that. What's the word? Gently. Gently. I, I, I hope that when you read Scripture this next week and you just come across the word gently or gentle or gentleness, it'll just pop out at you. So often when I've read Scripture, it just I gloss over that word. But as I was studying, it has incredible power. This, to heal relational conflict, when someone sins and you go to that person and say, hey, let's restore this relationship. Let's restore what was lost. It's called, like, we must do it gently. Another verse, another passage of scripture, a chapter that you can read when you go home is Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, Jesus gives instructions on how to deal with conflict within the church and with people outside the church, and he, he all wraps it in gentleness and love and humility. So it prevents major conflict. It heals relational conflict. The third one, this might surprise you, it advances the gospel. It advances the kingdom of God. Here's where I get that. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with, what's the word? Gentleness and respect. By the way, the guy who wrote this, Peter, most likely the least gentle person in the New Testament. Can we be honest about that? Peter, if you don't know the scriptures, Peter was one of Jesus' earliest disciples. He spoke too soon. He was harsh with other people. He was harsh with Jesus. He was bold. When Jesus was being arrested wrongfully in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was Peter, most likely, that took out a sword and cut off one of the guard's ears. Least likely to win the gentleness award in high school. Like, this guy was not gentle. And yet, post-resurrection, Jesus met him. And he restored him gently, right? If you read John chapter 21, Jesus was gentle with Peter. All his failures, every mistake he had ever made, Jesus lovingly came alongside him and restored him into ministry. And here we have Peter, a changed man, say, hey, always be ready to give an answer for why you have hope in Jesus. But by the way, I have to remind you, because I'm pretty sure I got to remind myself, do it gently and with respect. Do it gently. Peter was a changed man because of the gentleness of Jesus. It's incredible to see the power of gentleness throughout the scriptures. We receive it from God all throughout. And now we are to extend it towards other people. We are to literally take away the heavy bag of harshness in our responses and then give people the lightweight back 
of gentleness. I mean, you think about it. When you act or respond in a harsh way, it's weighty, it's heavy. It's one of those things that's like, okay, here we go. It's like you're, you're giving someone else the backpack when you respond harshly because it's a weight on them now. It's a weight on their soul. It's a weight on their personality. It's a weight on them. I mean, you felt it when people are harsh with you, no doubt. But if you were to trade it, and if you were to respond gently and kindly, people could bear that. People can hold, uh, people can hold the lightweight pack easily. That's what we're called to do to other people. And so the next time you think of responding harshly, may you just picture a really, really heavy backpack, and you're like, I, well, I don't want to give them such a weight. I'm going to give them just a lightweight pack. And that means gentleness. So I'm going to flip the next prompt. Usually it's step up, step in, step out. I'm going to give you the step out right now because I want to end with step in. The step out prompt for you to think through this week is how can I bring gentleness into every interaction this week? In your journal time, in your uh, reflection time, when you think about how you can impact others with gentleness, just how can you bring gentleness into every interaction this week? And then the third point. I think this is some of the most important uh, things we could do for ourselves is we need, we must be gentle towards myself. As you personalize that, as you write that down, maybe as you think about that, I'll say gentleness towards yourself, but I put myself because I want you to own that. I want you to say gentleness towards myself. We've received gentleness from God. And yet so often we're like, oh, I'm so thankful, so thankful for, for grace and forgiveness. I've, I've got this lightweight backpack from God. But so often, willingly, we put it down. And the way we talk to ourselves and the way we speak about our failures and the way we remind ourselves about all the ways we've messed up is like putting the lightweight pack down and coming back over here and like picking up the heavy pack. And, all, and, and God's like, no, no. I've, I've given you gentleness. Why are you being so harsh on yourself? Why are you so aggressive towards your mistakes? I know what you're made of. Psalm 103 says it. He, ha he has compassion on us because he knows that we're made of dust. Why do we keep coming back to the heavy weight of harshness towards ourselves when all along God has granted us freedom from that heavy weight of sin, but also the heavy weight of beating ourselves up whenever we make a mistake. Galatians talks about the freedom from sin. When we're walking in step with the Spirit, we're free from the sin. We no longer have to go back and be a slave to the heavy burden of sin. But we're also, Paul warns us, he says, don't go back to the heavy burden of trying to do it all yourself. The law, as he calls it, the flesh and the law. Don't go back and, and, and pick up all the things that you think you have to do to please God. Don't do that because you're walking in step with the Spirit, meaning he's given you a lightweight backpack. And he, he intends for you to be free and light and just walk in step with the Spirit without a heavy backpack of trying to do it yourself. He wants gentleness to define your life in all areas. We receive it from God. We extend it to others. But we must give it to ourselves. We must give it to ourselves, especially when we make mistakes, especially when our humanness comes out and we mess up and we give ourselves over to whatever temptation comes our way and we're like, oh, I did it again. God sees you. He sees me and he wants us to put down the heavy burden of trying to pull ourselves up from our bootstraps and do it ourselves and like do better and like clench your fist. He just wants us to release that and give gentleness to ourselves. And so the step in question this week is how am I going to rest in Jesus's love for me? How am I going to rest in Jesus's love for me? I want to end with Matthew 11 verse 28 through 30, but I want you to close your eyes as I read it. One of my favorite paraphrases of this comes from Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message paraphrase of the scriptures. And this paraphrase, I think, is so powerful, just the wording that he uses. So as the band comes up, just close your eyes. Don't worry about anything around you. 
who's around you, what's going on in your day, what you're doing after this. I want you to focus in on the words Jesus is saying to you. So with every eye closed, I want to read this over us. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, in the paraphrase in the message, it says this. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Friends, that's the goal. Jesus takes away the heavy burden of aggression and harshness towards you, and he gives you a free and light life. You've received it from God. You're you're supposed to extend it towards others. But in that process, do not forget to be gentle towards yourself. For Jesus himself invites you to walk with him, learn the unforced rhythms of grace, and learn to live free and light. That's the invitation. That's the power of gentleness. I want to pray, and then we're going to sing one more song together, a declaration that it's all about Jesus in Christ alone. So let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your truth. God, I just pray that you'll remind us time and time again of your gentleness towards us. May that, it, it, may that affect everything, God. May that affect how we treat others, but also may that affect how we treat ourselves. And I just pray all this in your powerful name. Amen.
this week, my prayer is that you will just live free and light. Gentleness has that power to receive it from God, extend it towards others, and realize it for ourselves. Math, that's the invitation of Matthew 11, 28 through 30, free and light. And the way you respond to others, the, the way you respond to yourself, free and light. Don't, don't go back to the heavy backpack. It's harsh, it's aggressive, it's not the way of Jesus. Embrace the lightweight pack of gentleness for yourself and for others. Go in peace. See you guys later. everybody if you haven't already be sure to download the church center app this app makes everything super easy it helps streamline all of your church events your giving and much more it just makes it easy to sign up for events volunteer and stay involved with what's going on at Oak Point Canton so if you haven't already go to the app store today and be sure to download that and get set up with everything we have going on here at church Secondly, if you've been here the last couple weeks, you've definitely heard us talk about our huge event coming up on August 28th called Rock the Block. We're gonna do it at the Schoolhouse Lawn right across the street, and we encourage you to come because this is gonna be just a huge event. We're gonna close out summer in a big way. We're gonna have live music from the Oak Point Band featuring all different types of music. And then we're also gonna have inflatables for the kiddos, free food and treats, games. It's gonna be one big fun event. You definitely don't wanna miss it. However, we do encourage you to use this opportunity to invite someone, uh, maybe a friend, a coworker, a family member, um, someone who's been on your heart. We wanna make this an outreach event and really get more involved in our neighborhood right here outside of the Village Theater. And lastly, about this event, we are gonna need all hands on deck. So if you're able to volunteer, we would love to have you. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed by the commitment level. Um, this is not something where we're gonna ask you to volunteer for the entire four hours. It's something that we're going to be able to do in shifts with people. So um, maybe you volunteer for an hour and then you get to enjoy the rest of the night with your family and friends. So if you can and if you're able and willing, uh, we would love to have you. You can sign up at the front desk today. And coming up on Sunday, August 29th and Sunday, September 5th, there will not be any kids classes going on here. So ages 3 to 5th grade, we will not have kids classes here at Oak Point Canton. We will have infants in the infant room. Um, the kids are welcome to join us in the main auditorium. We're just doing this to give our volunteers and our staff uh, a break for a little bit so they can enjoy service with their families. Uh, but this is an area of need for us. Actually, on those days, the 29th and the 5th, we will need hands in the infant room. So for anyone who wants to come and just hang out with babies for an hour, uh, please let us know. So we just want you to be aware of that um, the next two weeks, the 29th and the 5th. Those are the dates we will not have uh, care for Oak Point kids that day. And then also, if you have been giving um, here the last year and a half, thank you so much for your generosity, your commitment. Giving online is still the easiest way to give. However, since we are here in person, feel free to drop your giving off by the buckets, by the doors um, on your way out. If you're a visitor, this is a lot of information, so don't worry too much about that. We're just happy that you're here. We'd love the chance to meet you. Um, please stop by the welcome desk on your way out if you'd like, and we can say hi. I get to know you a little bit, and then we will have a little gift for you to take home. So that will do it for the announcements today. Hope you'll have a great week, and we'll see you next time. My sensory feels the truth as I just remember who I am in you. The gratefulness of your grace drags me.